Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. I'm playing in the T-1023. This is an American Tier 10 turretless tank destroyer, and it's probably got the best frontal armor, in my opinion, all round, on a Tier 10 tank destroyer, if you can hide its lower plate. And considering this tank does get a healthy amount of gun depression, I believe it's 8 degrees, unlike the turreted version of this tank, the T-1024, it's definitely a lot easier to hide those weak points. Now, there are some other weak points on this vehicle, such as these viewports up here. This very flat area is actually very thin indeed. If you're able to hit this successfully, maybe in close quarters, if it's face-hugging you, then you're very likely to be able to penetrate the tank. I have found my biggest nemesis in World of Tanks, as you might have learned from many of my videos, rocks. When I'm reading the chat while I'm streaming, I run into these on many occasions. Unlike the T124, this machine gun port on top of the tank is not really a viable opportunity to penetrate the vehicle. Unless you have a very high caliber gun, and you're most likely going to have to fire premium rounds as well, you kind of need about 330 penetration to be able to reliably or even have, even have an inkling of a chance to be able to go through there. So I'm playing with my buddy Ike. He's in the Z100 and I'm in my E3. And this FV215B is giving me a bit of love bumps behind me immediately at the start of the game. The enemy artillery is raining death upon us. And I don't want to get spotted right now, but I also want to try and dish out some pain. Oh dear, this FV215B is pushing me forwards. I can no longer turn my tank. I try and reverse, and he continues to push me forwards. I call in my buddy Ike. Hey, Ike, I've got a problem here. There's a grade A asshole behind me. Save me. <laughs> and with the combined effort of two tier 10 tanks, we're finally able to push this guy backwards. He says in a few seconds, sorry, lag. But he's wiggling his turret, so I guess he's got that strange kind, strange kind of lag where you can still aim your turret around at people but what are you gonna do unfortunately because of this guy we took a massive hit from the artillery now i guess i could block him here if i really wanted but i'm not gonna do that just because somebody does something to you that's entirely stupid and very juvenile doesn't mean that you should return the favor now, because of this guy and his intentions towards me, I decide that I'm not going to let him get behind me again, because if he does, it's very likely I'm going to get smashed by artillery and lose the other half of my hit points. And imagine what that enemy artillery was thinking. Jury's the fish in the Gwei 100 on the enemy team must have been thinking, oh my word, look at this, a train, how can I miss a train of tier 10 tanks for me to drop a bomb on? He must have thought it was <laughs> absolute payday there. So I turned around thinking that I should just leave this plank and go and focus on a different side of the map. But I can't leave Ike to die. Plus, I've actually managed to get myself into a really good position here. My tank is more or less immortal in this kind of a position, hiding its lower plate. And it does have a devastating 155mm gun capable of removing most of the hit points of the enemy tanks. A great shot there by the T-30 on our team. Must have gone through the turret of the FE-215B on the enemy team. We didn't even scratch them. So we fire one into the AMX-50B there. Unfortunately, it looks like it either hit the front of his armor, which was well angled, or he has just got the luck of the gods, because we didn't even scratch the side armor of that 50B. Now, even though I'm aiming here, I really don't think that this guy is going to come back. And I'm very surprised when he does. Again, we get a little unlucky and our shell dips into the ridge line. But we kind of flinched back and forth over the FB4202. This tank is mediumish kind of accuracy and the aim time is mediumish as well. And when I flinched my reticule over towards the FE4202. I really didn't think that he was going to make that kind of a mistake and come back out. I was very surprised that this AMX 50B driver would have made that mistake. But 
Five minutes into the game, we manage to pick up our first bit of damage. Not exactly an amazing game so far, hey, in the T123. We narrowly miss the cupula on the E75. Ricocheting off the top of his tank. Now I tell Ike, hey Ike, I'm going first. I'm an assault tank. Let me take the hits. We put in a great shot into the SD1, leaving him on 10 hit points, and Ike finishes him off. Unfortunately, Ike takes a devastating shell and is removed from the game. Artillery sucks, bro. So, I don't really want to be pushed out into the open, but Mr. FV215B is blocking me once again. Well, trick me once, shame on you. Trick me twice, shame on me. But I'm not going to let that phase me. Again, he hesitates about going in front of me, I guess because he thinks that I'm going to block him. But it's more of a case of I just don't want him to block me. So I go to the side of his tank there to stop him from blocking me. Luckily, he takes the artillery shell instead of me. And we put down that tier 10 artillery. Now, I just weathered a shot from that E75. I think it was worth it just to remove that artillery piece from the game. Now, hopefully, we can get a hold of this E75. Oh, wow. We're having so much luck today. And by the, the judgment of my camera movements there, I was pretty annoyed that that one dipped into the ridge. However, in this kind of a position, this E75 does not have the best opportunity. Bit unlucky there that we were unable to go through the turret armor of the E75, but in hindsight, I probably should have shot Coppola on top of the tank, or alternatively, I could shoot the ears here and here. Nevertheless, he just tracks us. We've got a really good repair crew, so we're able to slap the tracks back on quickly and finish him off. So, it looks like that T-57 Heavy is going to try and come behind us. So I decide to race back into the base. I spot a Fosh behind me. <laughs> Karma! Karma just struck there. I'm going to have to pause that. Let's watch it that. Well, let's watch that moment of karma in slow motion again. So we're driving along. A Fosh gets spotted behind us. I decide that I need to take some cover, try and get into the mound. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Thank you so much for becoming about five meters of rear armor for my tank. Really appreciate that one. Maybe a lot of you are going to hate me in the comments for that one. But it definitely felt very good while it was done. So now we have a Fosh against us. We fire one into its weak point, but we roll really low. 624 damage done there. Now I load some premium shells. The premium shells have got ultra high penetration in this tank. 375. Because in theory, this guy can one shot me. And during our first engage, he was full health. Unfortunately, RNG is not on my side this game. And a shot that really, at these kind of ranges, you'd feel pretty safe going into his weak points. Whizzes right over the top of the tank. And you can see just how frustrating it must be to be in a Fosh. So now I'm loading an HE shell. Because I feel I don't even need to aim at the weak point of his tank with my high caliber round. Luckily my repair crew slaps the track back on quickly. And that's all she wrote for the Fosh. Look at this absolute graveyard that we have created down this side of the map. And thankfully, myself. And a T95 in base who seems to also be having a fantastic game. Other last men standing. It looks like Mr. T95 just finished off the T30. So a good game to you, sir. Now, while the result of this game was far from remarkable, we managed to pick up a steel wall. We did finish top of the game. With Ike in third, who did also have a pivotal role in us winning this match. 
as well as this T95 who managed to pick up three kills from base. That's about as far as a T95 can go on any map. Maybe I was aiming badly or maybe we were just getting unlucky with where our shells were going and when they hit the target whether they penetrated or not. Nevertheless, hopefully this video was entertaining for you and almost a keep calm and carry on slash world of donkeys kind of video. It was also funny to see how the chat devolved. I don't usually show you the kind of chat that I see in game. Maybe this will show you why I cover it up with my webcam and why it was even more satisfying that this FV215B driver got what he deserved. And thank you so much for protecting the back of my tank and allowing me to go on and carry the game. Anyway, guys, just a quick note. You might have noticed in last week that World of Tanks released a micro patch, which made it so that my initial mod pack was not functioning perfectly in World of Tanks. Just to let you know that I have updated it and you can find that link as always, either in my FAQs or in the description of the mod pack video on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below and let me know in the comments what you thought about Ike, the Norwegian recovery vehicle. That absolutely cracked me up. And whether you would have kept as calm for as long as I did, or maybe you think that I did the wrong thing by darting in front of the FV215B to try and save the rear of my tank when I was on low health. Anyway, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.